Indirect exposure to trauma is an occupational hazard for those working with individuals who have experienced trauma, including health and mental health professionals, child welfare workers, and first responders. Exposure to other people's trauma can cause intrusive thoughts, a rehashing of traumatic stories, distorted thinking, and mood changes. Together, these symptoms are called secondary traumatic stress, affecting 15 to 50 percent of workers. STS risk factors include how much trauma a worker is exposed to, the type of work they do, their risk factors, and life experiences. STS can lead to significant distress and even post-traumatic stress disorder, a serious condition. To guard against STS, workers who are exposed indirectly to trauma must do what they can to take care of themselves. But self-care isn't enough, and there will always be an elephant in the room, that is, what's going on in the organization. When exposure is high and stress isn't managed properly, it not only hurts the individual, but also creates pressure on the organization. Effects can include high levels of staff turnover, low levels of productivity, low job satisfaction, and absenteeism. To protect against this, organizations need to protect and care for their workforce. But until recently, it hasn't been clear on just what organizations need to do to reduce STS among staff. Dr. Ginny Sprang and colleagues developed the Secondary Traumatic Stress-Informed Organizational Assessment to guide employers through the process. In collaboration with Dr. Sprang's Secondary Traumatic Stress Lab at the University of Kentucky Center on Trauma and Children, the STSIOA is being used all over the world to create trauma-responsive and secondary traumatic stress-informed organizations. The Secondary Traumatic Stress-Informed Organizational Assessment measures workplace stress in a way that's comprehensive, nuanced, and data-informed. This revolutionary tool uses structured questions to determine how STS-informed an organization is and how well they address secondary traumatic stress. This is an essential goal for becoming trauma-informed. Everyone in the organization has the opportunity to give feedback on how STS is managed and what changes should occur. These recommendations drive the ongoing work of the organization through learning collaboratives that structure the change. Using dashboards and color coding, the tool visually flags any urgent considerations that require prioritization and highlights the organization's strengths. The tool is used to develop a blueprint for intervention and to track improvements in managing STS levels, so strategies are data-driven. The outcome of projects driven by the Secondary Traumatic Stress-Informed Organizational Assessment is to keep workers well so they can better help people affected by trauma and to increase organizational resilience, which benefits management, workers, and those they serve. For more information on how to use these tools to become STS-informed, visit this website www.uky.edu forward slash CTAC.